Mega Man is known as Rock Man in Japan. This was changed in America because rock is well known slang for crack cocaine and the name stuck. Welcome to Professionally Casual Gamers, the podcast where two friends kick back after a long work week and casually talk about everything gaming. I'm your host, Alex, joined by Professionally Casual Intern and King of the Weebs, Cone. How have you been, dude? Uh, so I have some concerns with those titles. I think the <laughs> casual intern is a bit demeaning, and I'm not sure about King of the Weebs. You can't boil my personality down to one dimension like that. But other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm doing fine. Thank you. You don't like being the intern? We pay you in high fives. Yeah. Good. Unpaid internships. I don't know how people were ever okay with that. I mean, like, I know it's well, hard I'm to break sure into the, the job world, but... they're very okay with that. <laughs> yeah, like, imagine going to your 9 to 5 and you're like, awesome, awesome, here's a handshake. You're like, oh, can I get, like, money to, like, buy foods and services? They're like, nope. You, they're like, okay, just fine, a here's a pizza party. <laughs> but yeah, still no insurance. <laughs> uh, yeah. But, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I know I'm just a plan B because Ralph whoa, is not available, whoa. so that's, that's fine. That's cool. <laughs> Dang, dude. <laughs> okay. I'm coming out oh, with twins, So man. if you're wondering why Cohen is joining here with me uh, for episode 19, it's uh, because our boy Ralph, big shout out to him and his now wife, Sam, got married yesterday on January 22nd. So huge congrats to them. I hope they're Ooh. doing great, having as good of a honeymoon as you can at this moment. Uh, they're doing a little staycation. So yeah, they'll be uh, listening to this episode and I hope they'll enjoy it. Yeah, probably can't travel the world right now. So going to do what you can. Yeah, yeah, a little bummed about that. So hopefully, and you know, we'll we'll kind of get into traveling and things opening up later. Uh, but yeah, Cone, what have you been up to since our game of the year episodes? It's been a while since uh, we've talked. Yeah, uh, I haven't played any new games, so I'm sure that'll be really helpful for the discussion. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I've been looking at PS5 games and next gen stuff shiny. in general. Yeah, I mean, it does look very impressive, particularly the Demon Souls remake. Like, if okay. that was on PS4, I think I would have bought and played that by now. But the fact that I have to, A, like, physically acquire a PS5 somehow and then pay $500 just to play one game, I'm like, eh, maybe not right now. Yeah, but I am yeah quite excited. in those situations, like, it's... It's definitely a bummer because it's obviously like a gateway or like you know, it's a gatekeeping method for you to play yeah. the game. But once you're on the other end of it and you have the PS5, you're like, I am totally happy if this is an exclusive because then you know it's specifically made and modified for this system. Yeah, and you got the haptic feedback and all that. Yeah, I mean, since yeah. you have a PS5, could you just give me yours or like, like just oh, in general? Oh yeah, no, yeah, just 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 take yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> like I'm thinking that could actually work out. So. Yeah, when you want to <laughs> actually, bring out... I, I have not played my PS5 at all this week, so that sounds like maybe... a dirty lie. <laughs> Why are you on this podcast and lying to me? Uh oh. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah. So like, oh, other than actually, like, the other games that you've been checking out. Hold on, I'm not done with this thread. That that means like the entire week you didn't play any PS5 games. Was it just uh, like on the laptop, or was it League, or? Yeah, yeah. So I'll get into that. Um, Okay, I want to yeah, know what enough. other stuff you've been checking out. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's basically just been that. Been looking at some cyberpunk reviews, been looking at... I mean, there's some other news stuff that I guess we'll get into in a later segment, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'll still take this opportunity to show 13 Sentinels in case you didn't listen to the <laughs> Game of the Year uh, podcast. <laughs> it's a really good visual novel slash game that you should play. No one's talking about it. It's underrated. Get on that. It's on the PS4. I've seen it on a lot of sales, actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's been getting, like, it's definitely, like, the underdog game of 2020. Yeah. Like, I think I think if pe more people tried it out, they'd be pleasantly surprised. But it is, then again, it is kind of like reading a book at the end of the day. So I understand why it doesn't have... hour book. That has you at the edge of your seat <laughs> with crazy revelations <laughs> and great characters, yeah. But yeah, I, I actually, understand okay, why it's not... Uh, I want to try it. I just feel like I wouldn't finish it. 
Yeah, I mean, the way it introduces itself is that you do get hooked real fast, like on all the plot threads, like 13 different ways to start, and each one is like, wait, what's up with that? Why'd that guy do that? And you kind of want to know the answer. But yeah, it is a big time investment, so you'd have to be in the right mood for it. Hmm, yeah. I wish, man, I wish it was like a nice 12 hour ride, because then I would 100% play it. Yeah, I mean, okay, so when you think about it, I don't know, maybe that's a, a stupid question to ask. But like, JRPGs are also very long, and there's a lot of story, but I guess the difference is, you know, there's actual gameplay for all of that, because you're going through the turn-based uh, battles and the RPG mechanics, because 13 Sentinels is literally just walking to a person and, like, pressing X on them, so I mm-hmm. guess that's not really a fair comparison to bring up in terms of time investment or how much you're willing to sit through. Yeah, and with, like, traditional RPGs and JRPGs, they are very dialogue-heavy, Uh, a lot of cutscenes, but that's far from, like, the majority of the game, right? They're just, like, nice little pieces in between the action. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I don't know, like, I've been thinking about it more, and I don't think I like turn-based combat in terms of, like, you have five people on a party facing against, you know, other monsters and take turns fighting each other. I think I just don't enjoy that, because I I can't really think of any games that I've really been like, oh man, I can't wait to play this part because is is the appeal supposed to be that you get stronger over time or is there like the strategy and tactics aspect of it of finding weaknesses and like using the right spells at the right time like what's kind of the appeal in your opinion of the whole turn-based genre okay so i also am not a fan of turn-based combat like not really whatsoever the 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 kind of outlier in that statement is the persona series Mm -hmm. where even though, like, yeah, they're turn-based, the battles are super fast because it's all about just exploiting a weakness mm-hmm. and then taking advantage of that. And then, like, literally, as soon as the chorus of <laughs> Last, Last Surprise, Surprise kicks in, uh-huh. like, you're finishing the battle. <laughs> yeah. So they they last, like, I don't know, 20 seconds. Yeah, so I can definitely that see bad. that, making that a more smooth experience where a random battle happens. Like, okay, I mean, I'll get to this at a pretty quick pace. And then move yeah, on. and random encounters are just terrible. And in the Persona series, they do not use random encounters. So thank God. Yeah, like the the epitome of that is going through the like Zubat cave oh, and Pokemon. Are like, I can't see anything. I don't know how to get out. What was that Mount Moon and like Pokemon Red? That's why you get that repellent all day long. You encountered a wild Zubat. That's weird. It's pretty nuts. I don't remember the last 24 of these, but okay, I can, I can try to deal with those. Yeah. You gotta catch all the Zubats. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, um, so, yeah, like, turn base typically is not very okay for me, but a lot of JRPGs are moving away from that. Like Final Fantasy VII yeah, I was gonna, Remake had more of an action uh, combat yeah, system, saw, kind of similar to like Devil May Cry or something, if you will. Yeah, I saw the uh, you know some gameplay of that, and that definitely seems like a nice mixture of you know being able to be active and it's kind of action oriented, but still have uh, turn based elements to it. And yeah, based on the uh, Final Fantasy 16 trailer, that seems to be kind of the way maybe at least uh, Final Fantasy is moving because 15 also mm-hmm. uh, was a lot more action focused. So I'm wondering if that's the industry saying, oh, this is more exciting and the old way was kind of boring, or if it's just them saying, okay, let's try something new, let's try to mix things up, let's see what works. It's I know. definitely, the, the action approach, the action mindset to the battle system is definitely more <clears throat> contemporary. Right. Um, and I think what Square Enix's general like trajectory is, is to keep the Dragon Quest series, same old vanilla turn-based combat, and then the mm-hmm. Final Fantasy series as the more contemporary stuff. Okay, yeah, that, that makes sense to kind of uh, you know further make those series distinct in terms of, okay, this one's the big action if you want more of a character action thing, and this one's just more traditional as you remember it. I think that could be an interesting strategy. Yeah, kind of a win for everyone. Yeah, because if you, really- yeah, you know what you want, you'll go towards whichever series you want there. But Yeah, yeah for sure. That's interesting. But yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, not, ironically, Yakuza Seven. Yes, and that's yeah, doing the opposite, right? Turn base, yeah. When because if you've played, listeners, if you played the Yakuza series or if you've seen the gameplay, it is like literally a one eighty from yeah. turn base. It's all like moving around, 
constantly like using like your environment to like hit people with like chairs and stuff. It's all like in real time. Give them the chair, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was so very, Yakuza, like, go for it. Yeah, uh, Yakuza, like the earlier ones, were very brawlery and kind of arcadey in that you'd hit a guy, you'd get teleported into the pain dimension, and then just start like throwing bicycles at them. And on mm-hmm. the Yakuza 7, you still throw bicycles at people, but now, you know, it's <laughs> turn-based. And it does seem kind of still more free-flowing, like you're not locked in place looking at the dude, you're still moving around and then choosing your actions, but yeah, I don't know, I think in that case it's just a matter of, they're probably just trying to mix things up or, you know, reinvigorate the series since it's been going on for like, I don't know, 10 games if you include spin-offs and like, Judgment Yeah, I want to and... say since like early PS2 days. Yeah, it's it's been around for a while, so I understand why they'd want to have a new main character, a new kind of central battle system, kind of makes sense there. Yeah, it's just crazy to think in a world where we have Yakuza as now turn based and Final Fantasy <laughs> as yeah, like bizarre universe. Style. But uh, yeah, so Yakuza Seven it came out last year. However, I I did buy it. I bought it for like thirty five bucks on Amazon. It was on oh, sale, yeah. and the it. the free PS five upgrade is coming in March. So I'm waiting for that. Okay, but haven't you still not beaten Yakuza Zero? Oh, I haven't beaten any of them. I played like half of Yakuza Zero. I liked it. I think I just like found like another game came out and I started playing it. Yeah. Um, and then it, I, I've like I've almost went back to it. But at the end of the day, it's like okay, I beat that, and now there's six more. Oh yeah, I mean I think I've heard that Yakuza Zero is a good way to get into it. But I guess in your case, you could just beat Zero, then jump to Seven, since Seven is kind of its own thing so in that way you could have two separate experiences of the yakuza story but yeah i, yeah, see I mean I, I might like it, yakuza zero is a it, it's a good game i probably should be at some point but yeah seven is very good for newcomers and you know just fans of the series because it'll be separate storyline totally right, i mean there right. might be some callbacks for like you know fans but it for the most part is unrelated to the first seven games yeah, that's a good jumping in point. But yeah, I mean, that's that's basically what I've been looking at these days. Uh, what kind of games have you been playing this past week? So, yeah, I haven't played any Persona 5 Royal, which is terrible Ooh. because I was already trudging along through that game. And it's, man, it's there's just not enough time in the day. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, adults. that's what I keep telling people. Like, why do we have to do a nine to five when we could just play video games all day? Exactly, like, I feel like yes. that might be a better way to do it. Sign me up for that <laughs> life. Uh, yeah, so like after work, I've been going to the gym. Uh, been also, I finished Umbrella Academy season two. Then there's like other TV shows I might be Wait, watching. Is Umbrella Academy, the Resident Evil, like no, no, no. Spin-off? <laughs> No, <laughs> it totally no. Sounds I, I, like I it. understand why you say it though. It's kind of it's this Netflix series. Uh, it's kind of like X Men, oh, more like adult oriented, I guess. Yeah. Um, I think you would like it. Is I so, finished season two. I think season three is coming out does this year or next year. Have telekinesis powers? Yes. Okay. Well, you're you're convincing me. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think you might enjoy it. It's really really fun character. So. But doing like that, and then like a lot of days, I would just like wind down with Persona Five. Like mm. I'd spend like one or two hours before bed just playing it. Uh, but this week, I played a lot <laughs> of League of Legends with there some friends. Uh, a little bit of Among Us here and there too. I actually, I, I played two days ago Among Us. So yeah, you got to get back on that train with us. Yeah, I know it's just things have been pretty wacky over here. Yeah, but... I know your your work life balance has been yeah. a little nutty lately. Yeah, it's been a good time, but yeah, Among Us still going strong. That's good to hear. Are they, are they adding a new map to that? I heard they were... Yeah, it's it was announced. I want to say at like Game Awards, like the 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 ship map like the floating airship uh it's not i don't think it's been released so we're just playing on the the snow the ice one yeah uh but yeah so some among us a lot of league of legends excuse me uh again just playing with friends because it's just it's a good time win or lose honestly like we've been playing cone and i've been playing since like (laughs) since like early college and like honestly like you (laughs) 
<laughs> you go into it being like, okay, I'm probably going to lose. But like, I'm oh, losing with were, friends, so like, it's okay. We had that day we were lost like 13 in a row. We, and by the end, we were just kind of looking at each other, like staring up the ceiling. Like, oh, that was a really Where fun day. <laughs> yeah. I 100% remember that. You yeah. look in the match history and it's just all red. <laughs> defeat, that's, that's defeat. Defeat a lot. Like, where's my vic- That's weird. I don't know my win of the day yet, but I've been playing for 12 hours, so... <laughs> Yeah, oh my god i kind of miss those days but yeah. at the same time i'm glad we're past them yeah I and mean, I, I can't imagine like because there were days back in the day where i'd just do solo queue like it would be a weekend i'm like okay i'm going chogath let's rock and roll and like when you're not playing with friends you're just getting pub stomped like you didn't get anything out of that experience like your life has just yeah. gotten worse since before you started playing <laughs> that is just uh, I don't know, it's kind more. of the cold heart truth <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, unless you're, like, in super high ELO where you're constantly trying to improve yourself, like, yeah. I mean, obviously, if there's glaring errors, we would try to fix them. But, like, for the most part, it's, like, playing a game because, you know, we like video games and, hey, friends can play it, too. So, yeah. it's, uh, it's a good time. But, yeah, other than that, um, the Saturday Super Smash Bros. tournaments I used to play and are starting back today. Nice. Shout out to Game On Chicago. You can see me wa- You can see me just get absolutely destroyed um, yeah. by a particular DDD player. Oh, is he still there <laughs> holding it down? He, uh, I don't know if he's playing today. He said he was maybe going to, so we'll see. But yeah, yeah it might be busting out Byleth. Yeah, if he doesn't show up, that's your chance to run away with the whole tournament. I know. Well, we'll see. There's there's a lot of good people that play, but I'm looking forward to it because I really haven't been playing a lot of Smash Bros. lately. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of like the main driving force of me wanting to play regularly was for the tournaments. And if there isn't like that competitive scene, I don't know. I just don't really like doing that because the online, as you know, is pretty pretty terrible Good. yeah yeah i am like holding myself back from swearing but yeah why <laughs> <laughs> matches in smash ultimate are no bueno so these uh, tournaments like is it only people in chicago because i feel maybe that should make the internet better right like oh yeah so it's def- it's like the chicago area so like if yeah. you had a switch and like you want to play like, you 100 percent could um i think there's even like someone in michigan you play so it's kind of like the, the dark Midwest horse in area. Michigan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah cause, so like, the, the connection is like overall pretty good. Yeah, and do they ever have any plans after the uh, pandemic? Do they have like a place oh, to man. host and do like in person kind of like land not Wi Fi tournaments? Because that sounds like it would yeah. be a big increase to everything. Yeah, so they started out. Um, I want to say like early 2020 with the plan of doing in-person tournaments yeah. and in, I don't know how well you really know Chicago, but there's two neighborhoods uh, called like Wicker Park and Logan Square. They're like, yeah, no idea. they're near each other. Uh, it's probably like a 10 minute Uber from my place, uh, Northwest of me in perspective. So they're building like, um, like a video gaming, like, arena area. yeah like remember when in, in vegas at the luxor there was yeah, like yeah. that that place was awesome yeah, yeah. so they're doing so something so just or... like that that's pretty impressive <laughs> yeah giant pyramid no. yeah. so they're having like something similar like for like an esports center right and so i think their plan was to have the tournaments there um, if I'm wrong, I'm really going to be disappointed because that's what I thought this whole time. <laughs> you like, just made that up. Like, oh, yeah, they're, they're building it. It's going to happen any day now. Yeah. I think regardless, even if they don't do that, there will be Smash Bros, uh, hopefully weeklies in there. Because, I mean, that is like actual prime real estate to have esports events. So I'm really excited for the world to turn back to normal and for us to just get back it to... Exists. Dude, it's been... Yeah. It's been really weird. Like when I see videos or pictures of people like at movie theaters or like shaking hands or like hugging during like photos, I'm like, whoa, what are, what are they doing? Like, why are they so close? I'm like, oh, right. That's, that's how the world used to be. You could just do things. Like you could just go to the theater. You could just, you know, hug people, or, like handshake people. It's just really yeah, weird that I've I been miss like, it. rewired to be like, oh, I can't do that. I gotta, gotta stay six feet away at all times. And I, I wonder how long it's going to last after the pandemic when everything's vaccinated. Like, are people still going to have those 
reservations about like doing big public things. You know, that's, that's honestly a very good segue into our third topic. Honestly, let's, let's just jump into that. So, uh, Cone and I, we, we, we love ourselves a good PAX West. So I think we went there yeah. 2017 and 2018, no, no, 2018 and 2019, um, then obviously we could not go last year because of the Rona, right? So, yeah. uh, so I just want to talk about video game conventions in general for mm. 2021. So I think like since Christmas, the PAX team has sent me like three emails, uh, maybe like a couple even before that, asking to fill out surveys on like what requirements would be needed for me to feel comfortable to return to their convention or, you know, anything else. The first virus needs to be eradicated. Yeah, right. Just wipe it off from the face of the planet. Uh, And uh, ironically, as it stands, PAX has ton of dates this year for several several of their conventions. I think, like, PAX East, which is in Boston, I want to say, normally runs in, like, late February. They've pushed that back to, like, June Mm -hmm. And then PAX West, which is Labor Day weekend in September. I think they're still doing that uh, for this year. So, Cone, uh, what would need to be done, in your opinion, for you to go back to, let's let's just call it PAX West in 2021? Uh, And then as a fun follow-up question, what do you miss most about conventions? Uh, yeah, so I think first up is eradicate the virus off the face of the earth. Uh, <laughs> I guess we're realistic, right? <laughs> yeah, For I mean, 2021, I, at least. I don't know, because the thing be about done. conventions is that there's just so many people from literally all over, all and within. And they don't wear deodorant. <laughs> all within the same place. <laughs> and yeah, like some of them are smelly gamers. So like, well, the hygiene's <laughs> already at that low level. And then you're bringing in like, oh, I hope you wash your hands and like took a shower. But and, I like, didn't. <laughs> changed your heads and like didn't. <laughs> Like these doorknobs, like that honestly just seems like a kind of a terrible idea right okay, now. Okay, did so, you actually see anyone lick a doorknob? No, but I heard a tweet about it, so I'm pretty sure it must have happened. You know that wouldn't lie to me. That's true. But yeah, I don't know. It just, I, I just personally feel like that would not be a good. Just the fact that it, all the people come from everywhere. It's not even oh, this is just Illinois or like the people in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It is people from you know all over the country just coming in there. It just seems and like the world. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it seems like the the most biggest hotbed for that kind of thing. So I don't know. I'd, I'd yeah, actually have to wait. And it's super much, common uh, for people to have like post convention sickness. Yeah, yeah, the con flu. Con, yeah. There you go. That's a way more um, yeah. colloquial See, term I've, for it. I've heard about that, but I don't think we ever got that right. Like in the two that we yeah, went to, yeah, because we weren't I licking felt- doorknobs. <laughs> Oh yeah, Man, I remember I wanted to be like, no, not not this time. <laughs> Stay away from the doorknob. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't think I, I don't think we ran into con flu. I think I kind of did when I went to E3 back in 2017. Right. Yeah. I guess um, but it it's like you know, looking back on it, it's it, it's it just sounds crazy to do now. Yeah. Having gone through uh, quarantine, just everything COVID related. Yeah, I think for us, like the problem wasn't the con flu; it was just the complete sleep deprivation and like not being able to find places to sleep for the night. Like that's oh, that was the real oh deep up for that trip. Oh, what a time! <laughs> what poorly planning. <laughs> yeah, so I'll go ahead and throw Alex under the bus here, and also me <laughs> under the bus. We're going to this convention, and we have a hotel booked for what was it Saturday? Like Saturday night. And we yeah. come in on Friday night, and we go in to check in. And we're like, yeah, if we can get our room. He's like, no, you checked it out for Saturday night. And we all just kind of looked at each other. And we're like, oh, okay. So now we just walked back from the lobby. We don't have a place to sleep. And every hotel within, like, 50 miles is completely booked because there's a convention going on. <laughs> so as we call more and more people, we're like, hey, do you have, like, a room or just anything we can stay in? And they're saying, no, it's booked, no, it's booked, no, it's booked. So now I'm eyeing up the sidewalk thinking, okay, if I, like, put that trash bag over there, that could be kind of a good pillow. And I can cover myself with these leaves. And we're just walking all over Seattle at, like, 2 in the morning just trying to find a place that's open. 
And we finally do find a place in Seattle too, just wandering around. <laughs> yeah, so we're about to learn their ways, but we're we're walking around and we finally find a hotel that's pretty off premises, but it's within walking distance because we walked there obviously. And we're going to the front lobby. Hey, do you have an open room? They say yes. We say how much is it? They're like, oh yeah. So for this night, which is you guys sleeping there for like six hours until tomorrow morning, that's like two hundred fifty dollars. Like oh. Okay. I think, it's, I think it was more. Yeah. I, I think I just lied to myself that it was only $250. <laughs> or I could feel better about it. But, yeah. Yeah, we get that room. We lie down. We kind of stare at the ceiling. And, <laughs> yeah, that was a good first night. We learned a very <laughs> valuable lesson about time and space and how it relates to each other. The universe. <laughs> yeah. Time and space. Yeah, that was... Uh... I'll, uh, I'll I'll take I'll, I'll I guess I'll take half the blame for that. Yeah, one. I guess I can take the other half because I should have checked. But yeah, <laughs> I'm sure I'm sure Honestly, it, made for, it makes for a good story. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess it does. <laughs> it makes for a good story because we came on the other end like stronger fun. people and yeah, much more. That too. That's awesome. So yeah, like on these surveys that like the PAX team was sending over to me, it was like. Uh, so like on a scale of like one to five, if we implemented these, like how comfortable would you be returning? And I mean, honestly, like a lot of them were like, crap, maybe I would go to this. They were like, you know, if we limit the capacity to like a third of the people mm-hmm. that we're doing before, um, if we have like regular, like hand sanitizing stations, if we have, if we like definitely can implement like six feet apart, everyone wears face masks, we have, like, yeah. fiberglass shields across, like, stuff, and I'm yeah, like, and I, I don't I, know. On one hand, yes, on the other hand, you're approaching kind of a Cloverfield scenario where you're just walking into, like, the big white tent and people with gas masks are, like, hurting you along and staying six feet away from everyone. Like, especially the Starting fact that... cattle. <laughs> especially the fact that it's video games and you're touching these controllers that mm-hmm. literally thousands of people have touched before you. Like, you gotta make sure after you touch that to never touch your face or your eyes or anything until right. you can it again. So, I, I feel like that would be safer, but at that point it would just be very inconvenient. I don't think it would really feel like a con. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking too, is that there is some sort of, like, messed up... <laughs> like magic of like oh elbow to elbow we're all waiting yeah, in this stupid big long guy. line to play <laughs> like 15 minutes of a game yeah yeah then you have and like playing in those team. tournaments that we did at like pax west that was super yeah. fun too but the side of funds are definitely some of the highlights where it's just it's literally some guy who's just super passionate about one thing he's like yo i'm getting some people together we're doing a power stone tournament a lot of people oh, don't know about so this good. but it's happening and yeah i, I really like that that energy. What, yeah, what that's what I'm you... saying. Like, I miss, I mean, vac- I, we miss vacations in general, obviously, yeah. but, like, there was something cool about, like, just, like, you and me just, like, going to one of these conventions. Like, it was, a, it was a really, really fun, like, short vacation. It was, like, three days, I think, we used to do. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely a good kind of just escape from everything else, from, like, the work week and all that other stuff. It's just, oh, I'm just here with a bunch of nerds who are playing video games, and that's really all I have to think about right now. Yeah, definitely. And then, there's, of course, uh, your anime conventions. That yeah. There's, like, a couple World of really popular World. ones in Illinois, too. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was thinking of hitting up the... I think it was Anime Central this year, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But we'll who be, knows? I guess I'll be looking at that next year. But, yeah, what can you do? Yeah, I don't... I mean, I don't know. The, the vaccine is... It's... I feel like it's progressing and like being distributed and implemented faster than anticipated. And it's still only January. So if some of these cons, like, you know, Pexos is in autumn, who knows? So I don't know. I would love to, but, you know, got to stay safe first above all. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Let's move into some more industry news with Capcom. They've been a studio or developer that's, really been knocking out of the park like the yeah, past few they've, years they've been going to town man they got dmc resident evil street fighter five <laughs> kind of uh <laughs> monster hunter i feel like everything started oh, yeah. like turning That's in their favor true. when monster hunter world was released which i want to yeah. say was like in 2017 did you play that game yeah yeah i i mean okay i like it but it's just too grindy for me yeah, it sounds like there's a lot of, like, you need to go and beat this monster's butt, like, 30 <laughs> times and try to get him to drop the armor you need. 
But yeah, and then like you get into the next area with stronger monsters, and then there's better gear. So then you need to do that again, and it's like eh, I don't know. But people like, especially in Japan, like they love the monster <laughs> yeah. series. Absolutely adore it. So it is what it is. Um, yeah, like they're they're fun games. Lots of like the like the environment interacting with itself, like the the apex predators and stuff. Yeah, like that stuff is so cool. Yeah, so yeah. And I saw that they uh, for the new one. What's it called? Like Iceborne. Rise? No, the uh, the new monster. Oh, the Nintendo one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have like uh, I think they're called wire bugs. You can just like maneuver in the air and like zip line the stuff. And there's so a lot more. On Titan. Yeah, pretty much. You can maneuver here. <laughs> so you have a lot more aerial options, which apparently was a thing in earlier games. Not super sure, but yeah, they seem to be kind of uh, willing to mix up the formula and the central gameplay. Uh, a lot so just another way to keep things fresh moving forward i guess sweet yeah like honestly i'm i'm totally like rooting for a capcom yeah um they've they really pulled it back so yeah kudos to them and speaking of them pulling it back and rooting for them two days ago i want to say on thursday the 21st uh we got a nice close look at resident evil village or you know resident evil 8 uh, the game will be launching on May 7th on current-gen consoles, so PS5, Xbox Series X and S, also last-gen Xbox One, PS4, and also PC. So really just everything but the Switch and the Stadia, if you're that guy. <laughs> no, I just want the Stadia anymore. Games okay, how is that product not done yet? Because I, I don't thought, know. I thought it would be done like a year ago or like a few weeks after it first released, but... There's still like advertisements about it. There's still people talking about, oh man, it's you know this game's coming to the stadium or whatever. Like, I don't know, is is it doing something well that we're not seeing? Is there some market that we're just not aware of? So it's- Ralph was telling me that it actually ran Cyberpunk very well, the Stadia. That is weird. But other than that, like, I mean, if it wasn't Google, like, if it wasn't the Google <laughs> Stadia, like, they would have pulled out of this like yeah. a long time ago. I guess it's more of like Google probably maybe doesn't even notice that much like oh we're losing money on it anyway back to our five yeah, billion we're gaining billion an dollars. insane amount of money yeah. on like everything else yeah, yeah. it's like a, I guess uh, just a matter of them good for them yeah so uh on the 21st on thursday capcom showed a really spooky trailer <laughs> of resident evil village and also a trailer for the multiplayer game they're releasing alongside of it called resident evil re verse I don't know if I'm... Is it Resident Evil Verse or Resident Evil RE-verse? Maybe it's Resident Evil Reverse. Okay, so there's three you options. you got to open your mind of these possibilities. <laughs> yeah, okay, seriously. Which, the, uh, the multiplayer version. Some people were saying... Uh, so, go for it. Yeah, just a quick uh, theory here. Some people were saying that the Resident Evil Village is... Like, you know how they fade out on, like, the V111? That's an mm-hmm. 8. You can also read that as Rev3 which is Resident Evil Revelations 3, because there's been two Revelation games before this, so maybe this one is actually Revelations 3 and not Resident Evil 8. And that's why they keep saying it's not Resident Evil 8. Huh. And I think that's probably just pulled out of someone's ass, but I want to get that misinformation <laughs> out there. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, honestly, I don't know. Literally, I have no idea. But yeah, it's kind of cool that there are those like fan theories. I'm yeah. always down for like a good fan theory. It makes everything a little more intriguing. Yeah, but I think uh, it's a lot so, more likely it's just Resident Evil 8. But yes, please do continue. <laughs> Let's start with the main game trailer. What are your thoughts on, I won't call it Resident Evil 8, on Resident Evil Village? Is, do you think there's something 3. you would want to play? It's something that seems very low actions per minute, so maybe you'd be able to. Yeah, I mean, I think it's trying to at least aesthetically invoke a lot of Resident Evil 4, which I'm kind of surprised they haven't done yet. Because when you think about a company that has a huge smash hit that, like, redefined third-person action shooting games, like, you'd think they'd kind of go back to that after 6, for example, failed pretty spectacularly. Maybe they try to do, oh, here's Resident Evil 4 reboot. Like, oh, remember Resident Evil 4? But, yeah, it's taken them up until 8 to really go back and kind of... Uh, you know, give fans a taste of that. Here's this big spooky castle, and like, oh, here's, you know, maybe it's on an island, or like this kind of European setting. So I think they're trying to go for a bit of that style. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it looks pretty good. I think they're signing up stuff with vampires and werewolves, which I don't think 
Resident Evil has really because they've usually been about zombies and bioweapons and all that yeah. stuff. So this is kind of a a different uh, swerve into that. So yeah, I think it does look pretty interesting. Still in first person, I kind of would prefer a third person view for this kind of game, but. Yeah, I guess we'll have to see how it plays out, because I think first-person shooting won't... I don't know, like, it, obviously it works, it's a whole genre, but mm-hmm. I don't know, it'd be interesting. I, I, when I think about Resident Evil, I just think about third-person and uh, you know survival horror elements and good gunplay, but Resident Evil 7 was a lot more of a you know, horror game, quote-unquote, where you're just kind of moving uh, about to a spooky house, but... Yeah, yeah no, that's what I, I was going to say. It seems like Resident Evil 7 was, I, I'm not going to call it a reboot, but it was like a redirection for mm-hmm. the series. Because like you said, they used to just be third person, maybe not even horror, right? Just like yeah, I thriller mean, shooters. It kind of went up and down between just some more action focused. This is more horror focused, but yeah. there's usually like Resident Evil 7 was yeah, like Resident Evil 7 was, they definitely wanted that horror element more uh, implemented which I think helps with the first person aspect. I think like, you know, generally just, it is it, it is a scary experience if you're in first person. Yeah, it's more immersive, it's more like, oh, I'm this guy like, I remember, what was it, was it you playing the, because oh, I think man. we both played at the RE7 demo way back in the day at Ralph's place and there's that guy that was swinging an axe at you and you were like freaking out and punching yeah, TVs. And that's the thing because Resident Evil 7 on the PS4 had VR support. Right. And, yeah. and obviously on Xbox, they didn't. So I'm wondering if there's going to be VR support for Resident Evil 8 because that yeah, would be pretty like huge. If for, yeah, like if they had it for 7, they'd probably bring it back for 8 as well. Yeah, I would assume so too because that man, I, I, I personally am not going to play this just because I like. Do you remember PT on the PS3? Yeah, that was great. Everyone was just <laughs> cowering in fear during the entire demo. <laughs> yeah, like I remember um, Ralph showed this to me sophomore year of college, and then I think I should, I told you guys about it afterwards. But, like he made me play it, and like I like. <laughs> I really no. like. Yeah, he locked the door, tied me to the bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's good, it's good night. I, I like horror movies. Like I like the jump scenes, like the anticipation, like the lingering anticipation. Like I love mm-hmm. in movies, but in games it's different, right? Because there's still that really creepy lingering anticipation. But the thing is with games, like. I control the pace. You're the master of your own destiny. You have to yeah, make yourself with movies, do it. It's like, okay, I'm freaking out. This is scary, but I kind of love it. And uh, like, it's all just moving, you know, organically with video games. Like I need to like, I, I check every corner because I'm, I'm creeped out. And then like, I just get like this paranoia going and like, I don't know. I just, I, I can't do it. There's such a difference to me with like playing something scary and then like watching something scary. Yeah, so I, I think, would gladly watch you play Resident Evil. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing for me when it comes to horror, it's less about uh, the interactivity versus non-interactivity, and more about what kind of horror is being portrayed. Because I think jump scares in general are my least favorite thing. Because if mm-hmm. you go to a doctor's office and he taps under your knee, your knee's gonna like your leg's gonna swing out. That doesn't Literal mean that knee-jerk reaction. Yeah, it's it's just like a biological reaction. So I don't think horror movies ever really get any credit for pulling that off for making something very soft and then doing a big loud noise at the end of it. Uh, but on the other hand, if they have something that's more psychological or just like a really strong atmosphere, then that's something I'm always down to play because there's some, uh, there's some effort behind that. There's some art direction. There's some sound design. There's some music that kind of sets the atmosphere for, okay, this is a creepy place and I'm seeing that monster and it fills me with dread and it's scary, not because it jumped out out of a vent or something, but because you know, my visibility is really low and I know a bunch of people died here and like I might die here and there's a lot of storytelling that sets up the scare. So in that way, yeah, I think playing through horror video games is fine unless it's built around jump scares. And I think a lot of them are. So yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Yeah. I wonder uh, how it's going to be because, yeah, like, again, I the only time I really played Resident <laughs> Evil 7 was for, like, that 15, 20 minutes at Ralph's place. But yeah. with VR support, like, 
the atmosphere and environment and just overall eeriness when you're playing yeah, is just like ampl- it's it's amplified because you are literally yeah. there right uh so so yeah. i don't know i i feel like this would be like if they do vr support again like i think that'd be pretty solid like i thought the trailer looked really spooky like i was very much mm-hmm. creeped out by it yeah, the RE engine is pulling off some pretty amazing stuff because there's a certain amount of like dread or horror that visual fidelity can actually bring forth when you're looking at these very detailed maggots or like this creepy wall texture or like the scrawl of blood or whatever. It actually mm-hmm. does benefit from like better graphics. And I think a lot of the time it games should be less about graphics and technical stuff and more about art direction and like clever ways to display visual information and they have some personality but in this case i think they're kind of doing both and they're obviously like aware of how they're designing these levels and these sets they also have very strong technology to back it up and really bring that atmosphere forward that they want to yeah i did read that someone who did play the trailer um and i don't know how factually incorrect or factually correct this is but they said that the trailer ran like 4k 60 frames per second which is really awesome okay yeah Yeah, that's pretty good especially for something where you don't need like a performance mode or something like yeah it's it's good with like ray tracing obviously yeah we may have covered this but do you prefer performance mode or graphics mode when you're playing video games yeah i mean it really depends on the game uh for a lot of the games that you and i play they are more action oriented. So like, give me the performance. So give me the lowest latency possible so I can actually like yeah, play it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So when I want to do an action, it is, it's like, it's snappy. It's perfectly in sync. Uh, but for something mm-hmm. like this, where it's, you know, very slow burn cinematic, um, yeah, I, it's I a lot of execution heavy. Movements. Yeah. 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 I, I would go for a more visual prowess mode. For something like Resident yeah. Evil 8. But uh, moving on to yeah. the next part of the uh, the reveal that Capcom did. They did <laughs> Resident Evil R Reverse. Laughing? Yeah, I don't know, whatever. This multiplayer thing. So Rebirth. it's yeah, it's free for people who buy Resident Evil Village, which is really cool. Uh, ben, do you think that's something people would care about? It seems like you play as one of the characters from the resident evil universe and then you and like three other people cooperatively take down a villain there have not been very many details about it but i think that's generally what this is going for yeah i think if you're a fan of the series then you're definitely going to play this because if you think about a series that you're very invested in for example final fantasy so like even if they released a pretty poor multiplayer game like final fantasy decidia you'd probably still play that just because there's a lot of characters you know and like oh man i get to fight this guy and oh that's the ability that that guy used so i think if it's geared towards fan service and yeah i think people that are big into the series probably would play that so yeah and that's honestly um that's literally what i thought of too this is resident evil dissidia uh, oh, yeah i was so wondering far- why you didn't say like oh how dare you because i thought you'd defend dissidia but i guess i was off the mark there no no no, no, no. i i i love dissidia uh it, it's a cool idea the the newest one was a hot pile of garbage. <laughs> Just the, the biggest pile of garbage. Is that the one um, I played at your place with the targeting system and you go in midair and like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they thing. all have that, but like the three okay. on three. Yeah. It's... Like, it was a cool idea, but the online, like, the net code and, like, the matchmaking were just you so bad. I'm telling you that Japan's net code is bad. <laughs> and the thing is, like, that game literally is just online, so if you can't do that, <laughs> there is no game to play. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, the thing is, like, with the Final Fantasy series, there's a lot of really great characters, but not a lot of people really cared about the city of Final Fantasy because it is just fan service. Mm-hmm. So my point is would fans of like how many like really big fans of resident evil are there are there that many awesome characters i mean granted this is free yeah so that definitely helps the barrier of entry which is nothing yeah but i i mean i don't know this seems like like i don't personally care about it uh you're kind of in the resident evil fan base i would say uh is it something that like piqued your interest or yeah because i came into resident evil in a really like backwards way because i think yeah. i started with six and then five and then those were like <laughs> yeah. the only ones i played Jeez, for a really long reverse. time yeah and then i played four 
and a bit of the earlier ones. So I'm not, I wouldn't really call myself like, oh, I'm super familiar with Resident Evil, mm. but it's kind of weird looking back on it, like as a digression, because I really liked playing Resident Evil 6. I remember at the time people were so either completely hated it or just very polarized. Like, yeah, people thought it was like the game? most vile Resident Evil game yeah. in existence. And like I had no idea what they were talking about because I loved the gunplay in it that you could like dive backwards and roll around on the floor like an idiot, like shoot people in the knees and do like RKOs and power bombs. So I was like, this is awesome, what's everyone's problem? But as I played the earlier ones, I'm like, oh, okay. This is a huge departure from what the series was about, which was campiness, survival horror, carefully managing ammo, uh, you know, spooky interiors, kind of more of a grounded uh, slow paced kind of game. So you come mm-hmm. to Resident Evil 6 and there's helicopters crashing into buildings and like giants throwing trains at you. And coming from my perspective of never playing Resident Evil game, I just thought, oh, this is a really fun action game. But to everyone else, it was a disservice to what the series was. So now I understand what everyone's talking about, but I still really like Resident Evil 6. And I try to get people to play that co op with me whenever I can. Uh, much to their dismay. So I think I got Smith to play that a bit with me, and he was like, please help me, please get me out. <laughs> Mom, I want Resident Evil. We have Resident <laughs> Evil at home. <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, people are sleeping on Resident Evil 6. If, if you haven't played that and all you've heard is that it's bad, just approach it as an action game that's a departure from the series, and I think we'll have a good time. Interesting. But, yeah, I don't think I've ever yeah. had anyone recommend me Resident Evil 6, maybe besides you. Yeah, but. well, here you go. Yeah. Cool. Well, I guess for people who are fans of the series, um, Reverse <laughs> might be something really cool. And, you know, it's free, so why not, right? I think, I think like, most people, when they see Resident Evil Village, like, yeah, like, that seems like something I could totally play. And they see mm-hmm. Reverse, we're like, eh, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it'll depend on how much they like the series. Yeah. I I guess my hope for that is it was like a separate team that worked on that and it mm. didn't take away from time from Village. Does that make sense? Yeah, I assume that's kind of how it is since the multiplayer suite is kind of a different skill set than for the sure. single player offline experience. Awesome. Speaking of multiplayer, Microsoft. Okay, good. good this segment. was a very interesting little uh, piece of news that happened yesterday, uh, Friday. Uh, January 22nd. So Microsoft almost raised the price of Xbox Live. Now, that is not to be mistaken for Xbox Game Pass, right? So Mm -hmm. uh, Microsoft announced they would be raising the annual price of Xbox Live to $120, which would be doubling the current rate of $60 a year. Fans were very vocal of their disapproval, and Microsoft quickly nulled the change and kept the price the same. And when I say quickly, I don't mean like they took like a whole day to like deliberate on it. It was literally like four hours. Okay. Like, yeah, JK, the price are actually going to be yeah, the same. I think that was some upper management. It's like, okay, let's just see what happens. Like he puts out the tweet and immediately his inbox detonates. It's like, okay, all right. <laughs> Why in that one bag? We're just going to, yeah. That's, it's, you, you guys will forget it's about quite, that, right? Uh, yeah, it's quite yeah, a move to so, double it. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, if it was like 80, I don't know. Like, people yeah. obviously would not be happy, but like, would his inbox have exploded? Probably not. Maybe may only like two death threats instead of like 100. Yeah, 2,000. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, uh, yeah. So then, additionally, to make peace with their, uh, we'll call it a mistake, they added more free to play games into their library. Uh, Cone, question for you. It seems like Microsoft's current business model seems to be centered around Game Pass. Do you think this stunt to increase the Xbox Live price was to force people to just jump ship onto Game Pass? So maybe I'm confused. I thought Xbox Live was, okay, you can play online, and Game Pass was, okay, you can play these free games. Uh, like Those so are two separate things, right? They are, correct. But there's So there's there's Xbox Live, there's Game Pass, and then there's like Game Pass Ultimate, which has both. Okay. So X- Microsoft so is trying to raise way, the solo Xbox Live rate for $120 a year. Okay, so their thinking was they get off of Live and get onto Game Pass Ultimate since they need somewhere to pay for internet, and the Xbox Live one is not too expensive. Yeah, essentially. Okay. Well, um, maybe. I don't know. That's why I'm asking you, because it seems like yeah. Yeah, they're literally like, 
we we don't even care if you buy our consoles. We just want you on Game Pass or Game Pass Ultimate, whether that's on you know the Series X or S or now on PC. And now they have X Cloud, so you can play it on like a web browser or even like a smartphone. And honestly, mm-hmm. like even uh, Phil Spencer, the head of the Xbox Studios, he said at some point he wants Game Pass to be an app on your smart TV. Huh. So just imagine that, okay. right? Like you have the Xbox controller and then it's synced to your TV and you're playing Game Pass, which is a very cool future to think about. Yeah, I guess that would be more convenient. Yeah, uh, no, I mean, t- looking totally at would. the situation, I don't know. It just the fact that they backed out so quickly makes me think that it's either a mistake or they were just curious of, hey, can we double our revenue for Xbox Live? No, okay, just checking. So That's it's hard such to imagine an intense PR move. <laughs> yeah, like it's hard to imagine they really had a big game plan for something that was so quickly redacted. So I'm not sure. I think they were just trying to see if they could get more money and that would check out for a corporation. Uh, but it could also make sense for the Game Pass narrative to get everyone onto Game Pass Ultimate, but I can't really say for sure either way. Yeah, it's it's all very speculative, but I think it's generally what people are saying about this. Uh, but again, you know, just skeptical fans are skeptical. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, my thing is, like, if you have... Um, if you have a Series X or S or, you know, you're interested in Microsoft products like Game Pass is just, it, it's it's amazing. It's such an amazing deal. I've been tempted to just get a gaming PC or like a Series S just to get it. So I would much rather have Game Pass than just Xbox Live. Yeah, well, maybe they'll try again in the future and this time they'll go from 60 to 70 and people will be like, okay, that's not so bad. And then just slowly work their way up. Or they'll just jump into like 200. <laughs> like how about just, just get game like, pass, oh. please? <laughs> yeah, interesting yeah. move. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it was just so odd to like see that in the news and then recheck the news like a couple hours later. Like, yeah, no, they they went back on the word. And I don't really. Yeah. Has there been any other like video game like, news like news that? About- uh, I thought you were going to say about uh, Xbox, but I don't know. I'm sure people have tried other crazy pricing schemes, and maybe hopefully people would just ignore it or accept it. So sometimes you just got to take that shot. For sure. Uh, yeah, but, you know, overall, Microsoft has been... They've been a likable company um, in the past generation. So with Game Pass, they're trying to make gaming more accessible for everyone, like with the the adaptive controller and like other stuff that they're doing for that. So, uh, yeah, just get some more exclusives and maybe I'll jump (laughs) ship. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, all right, let's move on to budget gaming. Speaking of Xbox, some new additions to their game pass donut County. Okay. It's not game pass. This game, when I saw the initial trailers for it, like back in the day, this is the one where you move the hole around and then the things fall into the hole, right? And it gets bigger as it consumes. Something about, like, a raccoon, too. I don't know. Yeah, and when I looked at that, I thought, oh, hey, this is kind of like Katamari Damashi. Uh-huh. And I played that a lot. My stepbrother back in the day had a friend who had just a bunch of crazy Japanese games. And, like, that one wasn't... That's that's such <laughs> like, a weird thing. To like that. Was he and, like, Japanese or, like, no, did he just... No, it was just some dude. But he had okay. Katamari Damacy, he had Stretch Panic, and good luck, you know, anyone who's ever heard of that game. He had Mr. Mosquito. Uh, but <laughs> I remember playing that, and, yeah, it was really fun. I'm looking at Donut County thinking, oh, okay, this is kind of a spiritual successor to that because you're collecting objects, and you need to get bigger uh-huh. to collect more objects. But, yeah, I don't know if it's the same kind of thing, because Katamari, like, as you made the ball bigger and collected more objects, it also became a bit more unwieldy, and, like, you could kind of get trapped in certain spaces, and there was, like, more momentum to deal with. So it changed the game, and it would be easier to pick up bigger things, but also kind of harder to control, and you'd be more vulnerable to getting hit by stuff and then potentially losing stuff. So there was a nice game balance in that way, I'm not sure if that really exists for Donut County, but then again... Yeah, I've never played it. Uh, If you're familiar with another video game podcast called The Beast Cast, The Giant Beast Cast, Mm -hmm. a couple years ago for like Game of the Year discussions, 
um, one of the personalities who's not on there anymore. Her name is Abby Russell. She mm-hmm. was like a huge, huge fan. Uh, went to bat for Donut County. She's like big in the indie games. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I saw this. I'm like, oh, sweet. So she spoke highly of it. So I don't know if yeah. someone likes it um, and they hear about it from us, you know, awesome. Let's right. give it a shot. It's still by, yeah. Yeah. It's, it has a unique game design, so might as well yeah. give it a go. And, you know, if you have Game Pass, you can just try it, download it, delete it, whatever. doesn't mm-hmm. really matter. Uh, what Remains of Edith Finch, also added to Game Pass. Very story, narrative-driven game. It's in first person. Um, it's it's kind of like a mystery game. I've watched some gameplay of it. One of my friends who's a streamer, she was streaming this, so I kind of I was along for the ride for a little bit. Very, very interesting. I've never seen a game like it, to be honest. Yeah, it's kind of an older game, isn't it? Like five years yeah, ago? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a few years old. I want to say like May 2016 or something. Yeah. Cool. On the PlayStation side of things, there's a holiday sale. Um, or sorry, not a holiday sale. Uh, it's an under $20 sale. Yakuza Zero, which we were kind of talking about earlier, Four dollars and ninety nine cents. Dragon Ball Fighters for eight dollars and ninety nine cents, which still has a strong community and still is getting DLC for it. So if you are looking for a nice hyper fighter that still is um, still has an active community and uh, is being iterated on routinely, yeah, there's still any more Goku's to it, so yeah. don't worry about that's, it. That's like a meme, but it's <laughs> actually true. Yeah, isn't they the most recent one? Adding yeah. Yeah, it's like baby Vegeta Goku or like Goku baby or yeah, something. Yeah, so they're they're both Dragon Ball GT characters. It's baby Vegeta and then <laughs> Super Saiyan Four Gogeta, which is the fusion. Good. How, how yeah. many are there right now? I think there's like twelve. I don't know. Yeah, there's, and they can there's keep too going, many. baby. <laughs> yeah, Party there's too many. Stop. Oh man. Okay. Uh, Nintendo. They had. A, kind of lackluster games for sale but what they did have yeah, I'm was at this. <laughs> re-zero the prophecy of the throne for 53 dollars and 99 cents wow, six whole dollars saved. yeah or like 60 dollars this is it was defined as like a, like a category tag is like strategy mm-hmm. uh, i think it's mostly just a visual novel though yeah, yeah. But I, if you are a fan of Re Zero, season two is done, ongoing. I think, I think it's, it's done. Done, yeah, pretty recently. Yeah, that's a. It, it's a pretty solid anime. Um, and if you're just wanting more content for Re Zero, uh, maybe check this one out. Why not? Steam. We have the Binding of Isaac Afterbirth for five dollars and forty nine cents. I can't really say too much about this, and we're played it, but it's like a super popular indie game so it's very good roguelike yeah uh epic game store galactic civilizations 3 is free i don't tell me about galactic civilizations 3 i mean i'm just imagining it's like an an rts in space how is it compared to version galactic civilizations one Oh, uh, graphics. Okay, great. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh, anyways, thank you for sticking around for our 19th episode of Professionally Casual Gamers. We had a lot of fun hanging out with each other, yeah. and we hope you did too. Cone just had an okay time, I guess. Uh, if you yeah. have any discussion topics or questions, send it over on professionallycasualgamers at gmail.com or on our Instagram slash Twitter as Professionally Casual Gamers. See you next week. Stay warm and keep it casual. Casual. Will do.